In our next section, we're going to begin our discussion of the fabric extenders or the FEXs, the Nexus 2000 series switches. And specifically, we'll first start with a general overview of what are the extenders, how do they function a little bit differently than the regular uh, Ethernet switches. And then we'll look at what are the different supported designs for the fabric extenders to talk to the parent switches. And then also, how do we combine them together with the virtual port channels? And then most importantly, what is or is not a uh, supported configuration or a supported uh, physical layer one design uh, to use for the extenders. Now, as we talked about briefly before in kind of our hardware overview section, uh, the fabric extenders are the Nexus 2000 series switches, and they're considered to be remote line cards of the parent switch, the parent switch being the Nexus 5000, 6000, 7000, or 9000. That's going to be both the management interface, the control plane, and the data plane uh, centralization for any of the, uh, the fabric extenders. So again, the, the analogy that you want to think about here is if you think of your normal chassis based switch, let's say that we have a Nexus uh, 7010. So it has two slots for supervisors. Okay, so we have supervisor A and supervisor B. So these are our active, these are our standby soups. And then we have eight slots for the individual line cards. Okay, like we have a, an F3 card that's here as module number one. We have uh, whatever, uh, an M2 card here that's module number two. And when we connect these into the chassis, on the back plane of the switch, there's the, uh, the physical circuitry where the line card is plugging in to the, basically the motherboard of the switch. And then that's how all the cards are talking to each other over the, uh, the fabric of the switch. Basically, it just means the trace is on the back plane of the uh, physical board. Now, when we compare this to the fabric extenders, we're taking what would normally be a physical trace on the board, and we're changing this out with a cable. The idea is that in the chassis-based switch, your modules are always physically plugged in. So it means that you have a wiring limitation that if you have to go from one end of the room to the other end of the room, you have to lay a lot of uh, longer cables. Okay, basically, the fabric extenders are meant to be a, uh, a cable plant aggregation system that allows you to do less long runs and then a bunch of shorter runs that are going to be within the rack. So this is used to implement what is sometimes referred to as the top of rack to the end of row design, the TOR to the EOR. Okay, top of rack is, is referring to your physical enclosure, which is going to be like your 42U full-size rack. And inside here, you're going to have whatever your servers are. Okay, so let's say we have like C200s, we have Dell servers, we have HP whatever. Okay, then at the top, you have your switches. So we have switch one, we have switch two. Okay, we have two uh, switches at the top for redundancy. We're connecting one to each of the servers. Okay, so these are two 10 gig links that are running within the rack. Okay, same thing over here. So we have link from the, the switch one to C200, link from switch two to C200. And then we're running our uplinks from these switches. Okay, so these are uplinks like 40 gig ports, for example. And then these are terminating on the aggregation switches at the end of the row, which would be like our Nexus 7K, the Nexus 9K, okay, Nexus 5K, whatever. And then from a management point of view, okay, when we're talking about the fabric extenders, these devices don't directly control the configuration of how we're talking down to the southbound servers. So there's no console port. You don't tell it or SSH into them directly. You connect to the parent switch, which would be like the 5K in our particular case, and then over a, a custom management protocol that's running between the parent switch and the child switch, or, or between like the 5K and the fabric extender, all of that configuration is being uh, pushed down. Okay, where this comes from is the standardization that is 802.1BR, which is bridge port extension. Okay, so basically Nexus 2K is, is a Cisco proprietary implementation of this. Uh, and what this means is that you have this new frame format that when you send the frame from the Nexus 5K, the parent switch, down to the extender, you're encoding where do you want to deliver the frame to? What particular port do you want to send it to? So the idea is that if I'm going from port one on the extender to port two on the extender, the extender doesn't have a MAC address table that says, how do I switch the traffic between those two interfaces? 
Okay, instead what it's going to do is say that as packets come in port 1, I'm going to tag it as port 1, I'm going to send it to the parent switch. Parent switch is the one that has the MAC address table and it knows that if you're coming from server 1 on port 1 and you're trying to get to MAC address of server 2, you need to go to port number 2 on the extender. So basically what happens from a physical design point of view is that the traffic is going to come in from the server, it's going to go up to the extender, okay, so this is our 2K. The 2K is then going to send the traffic to the northbound parent switch, like the 5K. The 5K then looks at the MAC address table. It says, okay, I have MAC address of server 1. I have MAC address of server 2. These are on physical ports 1 and 2. I make the decision on where the traffic is going. I send the frame then back down to the extender, and the extender is sending it down to whatever the destination is. So the advantage of this design is that it cuts down on the amount of long cable runs that you would need to go from your servers to your aggregation switches. The disadvantage of this design, though, is that you're oversubscribing the network depending on how much uplink bandwidth you have from the child switch up to the parent switch. So as we talked about the different models of the extenders, that oversubscription ratio is going to be dependent on the physical box. So if we go to cisco.com slash go slash nexus, and then under products, under nexus portfolio, we're going to go down to the 2000 series fabric extenders and compare models. And the two that we're going to be dealing with are the 2348 and the 2232. Okay, with 2348, it has 48 downstream facing interfaces. Okay, the interfaces that are going towards the servers use SFPs or SFP pluses. So they're 1 gig or 10 gig ports. So they could be 1 gig copper, they could be 1 gig fiber. It's going to depend on the SFP that you use. Uh, for the 10 gig ports, 99% of the time you're going to use TwinX, which is a copper cable that is pre-built to connect from the server to the, uh, to the upstream switch. Okay, the advantage of using TwinX is that it's cheaper than using a fiber SFP but there is a distance limitation. Okay, and you can see this when we look at like our physical platforms and we look at some of the, and we look at some of the part uh, numbers. Okay, so let's look at the uh, show interface status. And let's look at port 21. Okay, show interface E121 transceiver. Show interface E121 transceiver. It says the part number is SFP H10GB CU3M. Okay, this means that this is a twin X copper port that is three meters long. Okay, it's like a 10 foot uh, cable, I'll give or take. Okay, if we look at specifically what this part number is and then look just at a picture of it, it's a pre-built cable that it already has the SFPs built into it. Okay, so instead of a regular uh, Cat5 cable, Cat6, that has the RJ45 that you punch down into it, this is already built at the factory, okay, where the wiring is done from the uh, electrical signal to the optical signal. So the switch is sending it out as, as optical, and then it's taking it in, in here as electrical and sending it across the, uh, the copper interface. Okay, the, the advantage then of this is that these are cheaper ports. So if you look at the, uh, the, the 10 gig regular uh, SFPs, like the multi-mode or the single-mode ones, compared to these, you can see you can get these for like 15 bucks. Okay, otherwise the, one, the other ones are, are much more expensive. Okay, so that's the main, ma the main advantage, is that you're cutting down on the amount, the amount of cables and it's cheaper to run those twin X cables than it is to run the, uh, the fiber SFPs. Okay, disadvantage, like I mentioned, is the oversubscription. So they're saying that for 2348, if you had this system fully populated, which means that you have 48 ports going downstream, okay, these are each at 10 gigs, so you have up to 480 gig down. You have six by 40 gig potentially upstream, so you have 240 gig going up. 480 to 240 is a ratio of two to one. Okay, then it specifies who can you pair this with? What is the parent switch? So 5K, 6K, 7K, or 9K? 
Okay, not all of the other extenders support all of the parent switches. So like if we look at the one gig models, previously this didn't support the 9Ks and it says asterisk check the release notes because not all the versions uh, support this. Okay, so the disadvantage then is that there's no local switching. So anytime the fabric extender wants to make a decision, the traffic is to go up to the parent switch, it hits the MAC address table up there, makes the decision, and then the frame can come back down to go to its, uh, go to its destination. Okay, there's a question, does the switch add some headers to command the effects about where to send the traffic southbound? Yes, it does. Okay, specifically what it does is it, is it adds that 802.1BR header, which is the Bridgeport extension. In the case of Cisco's implementation, it's a custom frame format. It is the VN tag, but it essentially means the same thing. It's encoding the same data. It's that there's a virtual port ID that the fabric extender is adding when the frame comes in from the southbound server port, and then the traffic goes up to the parent. The parent then knows that, hey, this MAC address is located on virtual bridge port 1234, and I know how that maps to what their physical topology is. So we'll see that from a MAC address learning point of view, the upstream parent switch is going to associate it as if this was connected on a directly connected link. But the difference is that the backplane between the parent switch and the extender is going over a cable as opposed to going over the traces on the motherboard. So really the only thing it's doing is just changing the form factor of the modular switch from something that is in enclosed inside of a physical chassis to something that is physically spread out with multiple cables in order to extend the, uh, in order to, to extend the backplane. 